All right, ready to dive deep. This time we're going back to ancient Rome, but not to the emperors you learned about in history class. We're talking about a philosopher who went toe to toe with an emperor and won. Okay, now you've got my attention. Who is this philosophical heavyweight? Gaius Musonius Rufus, my friend, mm -hmm. the OG of Stoicism. Musonius Rufus. Gotta admit, that name doesn't exactly ring a bell. Don't worry, you're not alone. Most people haven't heard of him, but his impact on Stoicism, huge. Think of him as the philosopher's philosopher. Even guys like Marcus Aurelius were influenced by his ideas. Okay, so we're talking serious philosophical lineage here. But why isn't he more well known? Was it because he lived during some pretty turbulent times in Rome? Exactly. We're talking about Nero's reign. Not exactly known for its embrace of reason and virtue. Yeah, Nero, the emperor who supposedly fiddled while Rome burned. Not exactly the poster boy for stoic self-control. You got it. And Musonius. He wasn't afraid to call Nero out to challenge his excesses, his abuses of power. I can imagine that didn't go over too well with the emperor. Let's just say Musonius got a lot of frequent flyer miles. Nero exiled him. Not once, not twice, but three times. Exiled? Talk about a hardship. What did he do to deserve that? Imagine speaking truth to power in a time when emperors could have you killed for less. So he was a real practitioner of what he preached, putting those stoic principles into action even when it meant risking his neck. Absolutely, and that's what makes Musonia so fascinating. He wasn't just writing about stoicism from some ivory tower. He was living it even when it meant going up against one of the most powerful men in the world. Okay, so we've established that Musonius was a man of principle, willing to stand up for what he believed in, even when it meant facing serious consequences. But what exactly were those beliefs? What was so radical about his philosophy that it got him in trouble with the emperor? Well, in a nutshell, Musonius believed that virtue was the key to a good life. And he wasn't afraid to challenge the status quo, even when it came to things like wealth, power, and even gender roles gender roles. Now that's interesting, we'll definitely have to unpack that. But before we dive into the specifics of his philosophy, I'm curious about this whole exile thing. Three times. You'd think once would be enough to make someone, you know, maybe tone it down a bit. And that's what makes Musonius such a powerful example of stoicism in action. For most people, exile would have been a crushing blow, a sign to maybe keep their heads down. Mm -hmm. But Musonius, he saw it as an opportunity. An opportunity? How do you turn banishment into a good thing? Well, for Musonius, it all came down to this idea that true freedom comes not from your circumstances, but from your own mind, your own responses to those circumstances. Even in exile, he was free because he chose to focus on what he could control. His own thoughts, his own actions, his own pursuit of virtue. So it was like he took that classic stoic idea of turning obstacles into opportunities and really embodied it in his own life. Even when he was forced into exile, he found a way to make it work for him, to use it as a chance to refine his philosophy and live in accordance with his principles. Exactly. And that's a powerful lesson for all of us, isn't it? That even when things are tough, even when we're faced with challenges that seem insurmountable, we always have the power to choose how we respond, to find meaning and purpose, even in the midst of adversity. Absolutely. And that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to Musonius Rufus. This guy was way ahead of his time, challenging conventional wisdom and offering a timeless blueprint for living a more meaningful and fulfilling life. But you know what? I think we need to take a quick break to let all of this sink in. We've covered a lot of ground, and I want to make sure our listeners have a chance to digest it all. Stick with us. We'll be right back after a short break. All right, we're back and ready to keep digging into the philosophy of this Roman stoic rock star, Musonius Rufus. Before the break, we were talking about how he turned exile into an opportunity for growth. But I want to get into the nitty gritty of his ideas. Like, what did he actually mean by virtue? Ah, that's the million sesterces question, isn't it? For Musonius, virtue wasn't just about being a goody two-shoes. So not just following a list of rules or anything. Right. It was about living in accordance with your true nature, aligning yourself with the rational order of the universe. Okay, I'm intrigued, but you're gonna have to break that down a bit more. How do you actually live in accordance with this rational order? Asking for a friend. Well, Musonius believed that humans are naturally rational beings. Okay. And that by using our reason, we could understand the natural order of things and live in harmony with it. So it's about using our heads, not just following our hearts. Exactly. It's about making choices that are in line with our highest selves, not just giving in to every impulse or desire. 
That makes sense. But how does that translate into everyday life? I mean, the, did Musonius have any practical advice for how to actually do that? Oh, absolutely. He had tons of practical advice, and it's surprisingly relevant to our lives today. For example, he talked a lot about the importance of self-control, especially when it comes to things like wealth and pleasure. I'm sensing a theme here. This is ancient Rome we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Those guys knew how to party. You said it. But Musonius believed that true happiness, true freedom, came from mastering your desires, not being enslaved by them. Easier said than done, right? For sure. But Musonius argued that it's in those moments of choice, when we're tempted to indulge, that we have the opportunity to exercise our reason and choose the virtuous path. So it's about finding that balance between enjoying life's pleasures and not letting them control us. Exactly. He wasn't saying we should all live like monks, but that we should be mindful of our consumption, our desires, and how they might be affecting our overall well-being. And it wasn't just about material things either. Oh, what else did he talk about? Musonius also challenged the traditional Roman views on gender roles. Really? Now this I've got to hear. We're talking about a society where women had very limited rights. Exactly. But Musonius believed that women were just as capable of reason and virtue as men. Wow, that's pretty radical for the time. What did he base that on? Well, he argued that reason is a universal human trait, not something limited to one gender or social class. So basically he was saying that women are people too. Revolutionary. Uh, right, he even went so far as to accept female students into his school, which was practically unheard of at the time. He sounds like he was a man ahead of his time in so many ways. Absolutely. But his views on gender equality weren't just about fairness. They were also rooted in his belief that a just and virtuous society requires the contributions of all its citizens. That's a message that still resonates today. It certainly does. And it speaks to the enduring power of Musonius's ideas. They weren't just relevant to ancient Rome. They offer a timeless blueprint for living a more meaningful and fulfilling life, no matter who you are or where you come from. I love that. But we haven't even touched on his views on education or how he dealt with those multiple exiles. There's still so much to unpack. And unpack we shall. But for that, we'll need to delve even deeper into the mind of Musonius Rufus. Okay, ready to jump back in. We were just about to unearth more of Musonius Rufus's wisdom. And trust me, there's plenty more where that came from. We'll lay it on us. What else did this Roman Stoic have to say about living a good life? Well, we were just talking about his emphasis on moderation, right? And how it wasn't about deprivation, but finding balance. Right, like enjoying life's pleasures without letting them control you. It's something we all struggle with. It's a timeless struggle, right? And Musonius, living in ancient Rome, was surrounded by excess. Oh yeah, those Romans were famous for their feasts and extravagance. Yeah, exactly. But Musonius saw how that pursuit of pleasure could become a trap, how it could distract people from what truly mattered. So he was advocating for a more mindful approach to enjoyment, like appreciate the good things, but don't let them rule you. Exactly. He believed that overindulgence in anything could cloud our judgment and hold us back from reaching our full potential as rational, virtuous beings. Makes sense. So it's about finding that middle path, right? Not denying yourself every pleasure, but not going overboard either. Right. It's about aligning your choices with your values, living in a way that brings lasting fulfillment, not just fleeting pleasure. It's a tough balance to strike, though, especially in today's world with so many temptations and distractions. Absolutely. It's like a constant practice. And Musonius knew that. He emphasized that living virtuously wasn't about achieving some perfect state, but about constantly striving, constantly choosing the better path. It's about the journey, not the destination. Precisely. And part of that journey is about embracing our capacity for reason, for making choices that are in line with our highest selves. It's about recognizing that we have the power to shape our lives, even in the face of challenges. So it's not just about enduring hardship, but about actively using those experiences to learn and grow. Exactly. Musonia saw challenges as opportunities to strengthen our virtue, to test our commitment to living in accordance with nature. Remember how he was exiled three times? Oh yeah, I don't think I'll ever forget that. Talk about resilience. He didn't just survive those exiles, he thrived in them. He used them to refine his philosophy, to deepen his understanding of freedom and virtue. That's such a powerful example. It's like he's saying, hey, life is gonna throw you curveballs but you get to decide how you're gonna react. You can let those challenges break you or you can use them to become stronger, wiser. And that's the heart of Musonius' message, isn't it? Yeah. That we all have that inner strength, that capacity for growth. Mm -hmm. We just have to cultivate it. I think that's a perfect note to end on. 
Musonius Rufus, a man who walked the Stoic walk, even when it meant challenging emperors and facing exile. His story is a reminder that true freedom, true happiness comes from within, and that by cultivating our virtue, by aligning ourselves with reason and nature, we can live lives of meaning and purpose no matter what challenges we face. Couldn't have said it better myself. Musonius may not be a household name, but his wisdom is as relevant today as it was in ancient Rome. Absolutely. So until next time, keep seeking. Keep life, we hold our heads high through the stormy skies. We never say die. Facing every challenge like a stoic night. With every step forward, we ignite the night. Bounce back from the falls, never showing no fear. In the darkest moments, our minds stay clear with the heart of iron and a steady aim. We charge through the pain, never seeking fame. Keep it moving, keep it strong. Push it forward all day long. Stoic courage, battle. Raise your voice and sing this song From the valley's low to the highest peaks We conquer the silence even when it speaks Life's battles rage on, we never shy away Standing firm in the fray each and every day Rhythm of resilience pounding in our chest Fighting every battle, never taking rest Stoic courage flowing in our veins Through the joy and through the pains Keep it moving, keep it strong Push it forward all day long This song Keep it moving, keep it strong Push it forward all day long Stoic courage, battle on Raise your voice and sing this song Low to the highest peaks We conquer the silence even when it speaks Life's battles rage on We never shy away Standing firm in the fray each and every day Rhythm of resilience pounding in our chest Fighting every battle never taking rest Stoic courage flowing in our veins Through the joy and through the pains Keep it moving, keep it strong Push it forward all day long Stoic courage battle Not one of them by themselves don't work magically. You can't work your way to it. You can't fake your way to it. It's a beautiful blend of faith. I believe the plane is going to land in Australia, but I still got to get on it. Oh, faith. I believe that people are going to show up. Like we're taking a chance. We don't know if people are going to register and come. We're in five. We're here. We're in Melbourne. We're in Brisbane. We, we're in Perth. We're in Sydney. We don't know that people are going. We take, we bring our, I brought my wife. If I, if I crash with my wife, that's it for our leg. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? So, so faith is great. We believe we're going to get here. We believe things are going to work out, but I still got to get on a plane. I still got to land. I still got to work out. I still got to do TGIM. We still got to do the podcast. Like nothing changes because I'm in a different country and I'm in today or tomorrow. <laughs> I'm literally in tomorrow right now. I need you to write this down. How can you be more intentional and deliberate about your life? And when you get home, you're going to answer it for me. All right. Two more things. I'm going to let you guys get out of here. I promise. I need you to be intentional and deliberate. We do. Do we do the podcast at a different time every week? Same time. Do we do thank God it's Monday on, on Wednesday? Do I do my, as a preacher, do I have my services on Thursday? Same, same thing every. Come on, come on, guys. I'm not trying to make this deep. I'm trying to make this as simple as I can. When you leave this room, you're going to go to a whole nother level a year from now, two years from now, three years from now. Denzel walked in and said, 16 seconds. Principle number two, he was aware, heightened sense of awareness. You need a heightened sense of awareness. Some of you are making the same mistakes over and over and over and over and over and over. Being lonely and being alone are different things. If you're right, but you're obnoxious about it, people won't see you as the good guy.
He who is brave is free. Seneca Who controls the past controls the future. Who controls the present controls the past. The only person with whom you have to compare yourself is you in the past. The mind loves to complicate things. Truth is simple. Muji. The things themselves, which either to get or to avoid thou art put to so much trouble, come not unto thee themselves, but thou in a manner goest unto them. Let then thine own judgment and opinion concerning those things be at rest. And as for the things themselves, they stand still and quiet, without any noise or stir at all. And so shall all pursuing and flying cease. And the problem with some of you in this room, you don't have no tribe. You ain't got nothing pushing you. You ain't got no reason for waking up in the morning. You ain't got no reason for pushing past that pain. You have no reason. You better find one before you get out of here today. You better go inside. You still looking outside for the stuff that's already inside. You still looking for someone to save you when you already your superhero. You looking for some information from somebody when you already got what you need in your head. It's just time for you to get up and be the best version of you. It's not an option. And the reason why some of you are not where you're supposed to be, you've given yourself an option. You've given yourself an out. You've given yourself an excuse. You've given yourself room not to do it. But you have what it takes. Give me some energy. I can. I, I will. I, I, must. I must. Come on, I can. I can. Come on, I will. I, I must. I can! Let's go, let's go, let's go! Let's go! I can means I have the ability to do it. I got what it takes. I have the ability to do it. I will! I have the willpower to make it happen. I must! My wife needs me. I must! My son needs me. I must! My daughter needs me. We can, we will, and we must get through this. Let's go. I want to ask you a question, seriously. This is going to be hard because some of you are young and you like still worried about what people think about you so you don't want to be honest in front of people. I want you to think about what level you want. Are you giving 90, 80, 70? Listen to what I'm saying for a minute. Early to bed and early to rise in old age makes a man healthy wealthy and wise. If you get up in the morning, remember what you promised yourself at night. God has entrusted me with myself. Epictetus Don't be afraid to take risks and try new things. Life is too short to always play it safe. Time is money. Nobody cares what you did yesterday. What have you done today to better yourself? David Goggins. Not only now henceforth to have a common breath, or to hold correspondency of breath with that air that compasseth us about, but to have a common mind, or to hold correspondency of mind also with that rational substance which compasseth all things. For that also is of itself, and of its own nature, if a man can but draw it in as he should, everywhere diffused, and passeth through all things, no less than the air doth, if a man can but suck it in. of $300,000 if you take it within this time frame. However, after this time frame, when we have the downsizing, you might be among the people cut and you will lose all 
of benefits that we're talking about right now, and the most you can get is two-week severance pay. Ladies and gentlemen, only 50% of the people that were eligible took this. Let me tell you something. If I'd been there, I'd have gone to ask for your check. See, ladies and gentlemen, life is too short trying to play it safe. It's too short and unpredictable being miserable. It's too short for that. Here's the thing. There's no safe position in life. Let me tell you why. It's a quiet secret that most people don't realize. You can't get out of life alive. Hello, you can't get out of life alive. So there's no safe position. So if you want to make this your decade, you've got to decide to be bold. So you got to be bold in life. You got to take life on. I remember I was at a major corporation. I had to give a presentation and there were two guys sitting across from me and the guy said to the other fellow looking at the last two finalists and that involved my firm and their firm said, listen, looking at the credentials, this guy doesn't have any credentials. We have an advantage here. We've got two PhDs between us. I got up and I went in the bathroom, start talking to myself. I said, Les Brown, what do you care about their two PhDs? You have six children and a mama to take care of. And I went in that meeting and first of all, I went at walking bowl, looking good, feeling good and smelling good. And I sat across that table and we started negotiating and I operated in a spirit of absolute certainty. I looked at them as if the only reason that they were born was to give me that contract. They survived one out of nine million sperms to carry out this transaction. And I got the contract. So you've got to decide to be bold. Most people go through life trying to creep. No, no, no. Trying to be casual about it. No, no, no. You go through life being casual, you end up a casualty. No, you've got to be bold in life. You've got to take life on. When you have some goal out here that you're stretching for and reaching for that takes you out of your comfort zone. Don't react. Cut them off silently. Be like the cliff against which the waves continually break, but it stands firm and tames the fury of the water around it. He suffers more than necessary who suffers before it is necessary. Seneca Create and stick to a personal budget. Circumstances make man, not man's circumstances. To be free, you must transcend the illusion of separation. Papaji.